Welcome back to the Operation Freedom YouTube channel. What we do here is shine the light of truth on the deep state. They hate that. We do it figuratively with our presentations. We do it literally with our sponsor's product, PatriotLegacy.com. PatriotLegacy.com, featured product of theirs, the Patriot Beacon. Six overall lighting functions. In addition, solar powered, don't need batteries. You can charge your other devices like your phone from it. In addition, you got a compass, you got a window break and hammer, and you got a seatbelt cutter. Plus, if those deep state dweebs get a, just a little bit too close to you, blast them with this. They're gone. Go to PatrioticLegacy.com. PatrioticLegacy.com. Get yourself, your kids, your grandkids, your car. Can carry it with you anytime. PatrioticLegacy.com. The Patriot Beacon. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back. In today's presentation, we are going to focus on Thanksgiving, the real story. The story that the deep state does not want you to know about. It's a story that's not taught in schools, unfortunately, but should be. It's a story that was passed on to me by my mom, the history teacher, who always taught me when it comes to history, dig deep. Don't just scratch the surface or, ex or accept what you're taught in textbooks or in school. Because only when you dig deep will you really get to the the real crux of what the historical event was about. And I believe when it comes to the real story of Thanksgiving, it is really the epitome of, well, why we should dig deep. I'd like to wish, and all of us in Operation Freedom, DaveJanda.com would like to wish you and your families and your loved ones a very happy Thanksgiving. And we have a tremendous amount to be thankful about. You know, we all tend to focus on what is not happening, that, that things aren't happening fast enough. And I get it. But just think of where we are today and where we were prior to November 8th, 2016 and the election of Donald Trump as president. We've come a long way. We've had tremendous exposures that have occurred of the deep state. And today, I believe the deep state is panicked. And it knows that it's lost its control mechanisms. And this is why we're seeing these hysterical behaviors out of them, whether it's the Russian collusion hoax or the Ukraine hoax or the impeachment hoax. Those are signs and symptoms of a flailing dead entity. And that dead entity is the deep state. We have come a long way. We have a lot further to go, but we're a lot better off than we were prior to November 8, 2016. And for that, I am truly thankful. I want to take you back many years because I'm an old guy. Um, I came home from first grade and um, it was around Thanksgiving time. And we had had a Thanksgiving play that day at school. And my mom asked, what happened today, Dave, at school? And I told her, well, we had this play about Thanksgiving. She asked me to, so well, tell me about it. And we I talked about how, well, you know, the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower and they were having a tough time of it, but they started working with the Indians and, well, they all got along and, well, everything worked out great because prior to that they were having troubles and people weren't doing well and, but because of getting, oh, it was great, and, and, and they celebrated, have this, and from then on, it was perfect. And my mom said, you know, that's a great story, Dave, but it's not accurate. It's not true. And she'd always give me a choice. Did you want the truth, or do you want to go with what you've been told? And I'd always go with, well, give me the truth. And the reason is, is because she always would go much more in depth on issues. And she started this very early in my life and continued to her dying day. And the story that she told me about the real Thanksgiving, the story that the deep state does not want you to know about, is the same story that was put forward by Richard Mayberry in 1985. I believe he published it in, in a, a periodical called The Free Market. And it's a tradition we do with the radio show Operation Freedom where I go through this story. 
And this year we thought we'd do it on YouTube. So I'd like to bring you Richard Mayberry's story, The Thanksgiving Hoax, which is not quite word for word, but completely similar to the story that Ruth Janda told her son about what the real Thanksgiving is about. From Richard Mayberry. The official story is nothing like what really happened. It is a fairy tale, a whitewashed, sanitized collection of half-truths which divert attention away from Thanksgiving's real meaning. The official story has the pilgrims boarding the Mayflower, coming to America, establishing Plymouth Colony in the winter of 1620 to 1621. The first winter's hard, half the colonists die. But the survivors are hardworking and tenacious and they learn new farming techniques from the Indians. The harvest of 1621 is bountiful. The pilgrims hold a celebration, give thanks to God. They are grateful for the wonderful new abundant land he has given them. The official story then has the pilgrims living more or less, well, happily ever after, and each year repeating the first Thanksgiving. Other early colonies also have hard times at first, but they soon prosper and adopt the annual tradition of giving thanks for this prosperous new land called America. The problem with this official story is that the harvest of 1621 was not bountiful, nor were the colonists hardworking or tenacious. 1621 was a famine year, and many of the colonies were actually lazy thieves. My mom, um, one of the books she she utilized in her history classes that she taught was the, the history of Plymouth Plantation. And actually, Marbury talks about this in his, in, in his writings. In, in, in the history of Plymouth Plantation, the governor of, of the colony, William Bradford, reported that the colonists went hungry for years because they refused to work in the fields. They preferred instead to steal food. He says the colony was riddled with corruption, with confusion and discontent. The crops were small because much was stolen both by night and day before it became scarce and edible. But in subsequent years, something changes. The harvest of 1623 was different. Suddenly, instead of famine, now God gave them plenty. In fact, in 1624, so much food was produced that the colonists were able to begin exporting corn. So what changed? What happened? Well, after the poor harvest of 1622, well, Bradford decided to, well, go to the drawing board. And they began to think about how they might raise as much corn as they could and obtain a better crop. They began to question their form of economic organization. See, this had required their previous form, the one that led to the famines, was based on, quote, all profits and benefits that are got by trade, working, fishing, or other means were to be placed in the common stock of the colony, and that all such persons as are of this colony are to have their meat, drink, apparel, and all provisions out of the common stock. Socialism. A person was to put into the common stock all he could and take out all, only what he needed. This, this, from each according to his ability to each according to his need, was an early form of yeah, socialism, as Marbury points out, and is why the pilgrims were starving. Bradford writes that young men that are most able and fit for labor service complained about being forced to spend their time with, and strength to work for other men's wives and children. So the young and strong refused to work, and the total amount of food produced was never adequate, hence the famine and the starvations. To rectify the situation in 1623, Bradford abolished socialism. He gave each household a parcel of land, told them they could keep what they produced, and traded away as they saw fit. In other words, he replaced socialism with a free market. And that was the end of the starvation and famines. Many early groups of colonists also set up socialist states, all with the same terrible results. In Jamestown, established in 1607, out of every shipload of settlers that arrived, less than half would survive their first 12 months in America. Most of the work was being done by only one-fifth of the men, the other four-fifths choosing to be parasites. In the winter of 1609 to 1610, called the Starving Time, the population fell from 500 to just 60. Then the Jamestown colony was converted to a free market, just 
as Plymouth did. And the results were every bit as dramatic as those in Plymouth. In 1614, Colony Secretary Ralph Hammer wrote that after the switch, there was, quote, plenty of food, which every man by his own industry may easily and doth procure, end quote. He said that when socialist systems had prevailed, quote, we reap not so much corn from the labors of 30 men as three men have done for themselves now, end quote. You see, folks, as Richard Marbury points out, as Ruth Janda pointed out to her first grade son, before these free markets were established, the colonists really had nothing to be thankful. But after free markets were established, the resulting abundance was so dramatic that the annual Thanksgiving celebrations became common throughout the colonies. And in 1863, Thanksgiving became a national holiday. Thus, the real reason for Thanksgiving deleted from the official story, from textbooks, from school plays, is the following. Socialism does not work. The one and only source of abundance is free markets, and we thank God we live in a country where we can have them. You see, folks, Prior to November 8, 2016, our country had devolved into a 21st century version of that Plymouth colony and that Jamestown colony. And since November 8, 2016, well, we've had a rejuvenation, a regeneration, a stepping back from the seeds of socialism that had been planted over many decades time. Let's not just pin this on Obama. The Bushes were also guilty of it, as were the Clintons. And before that, actually, you can go back to FDR and decades before that. You see, what happened over all those decades time in our country is that people placed their dependence on the government. And I believe on November 8, 2016, the people that were the providers of this country, the people who wanted a job in this country, stepped forward and said, you know what? No. No on the seeds of socialism and no on the dependency. My mom, going back to my mom, you know, Churchill was one of her fam favorite folks in historical terms. And her favorite quote was by Churchill, you make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give. See, with Obama and several of the administrations before him, what you got was dependency, oppression, giving minimally back. And hopefully, as the historians look back to November 8th, 2016, and all the years that followed, that they'll see it as one of an era of freedom, of free markets, and of giving back. We're facing an election in November 2020. And frankly, if you look at those right now that are vying for the presidency on the Democrat side, every single one of them has embraced socialism. Yeah. They've embraced Jamestown, and Plymouth Colony. They've embraced their histories of famine and starvation. It's that simple. We have a choice in 2020. Plymouth Colony under socialism or Plymouth Colony 
under free markets. It's that simple. That is the story that Ruth Janda told her first grade son. That is the story that Richard Marbury brought forward in his excellent article. Let's hope that um, the citizens of this country choose the free markets of Plymouth Colony. They did November 8, 2016. Hopefully they do the same in November 2020. I wish you, your family, your friends, a very happy Thanksgiving. We do have a tremendous amount to be thankful about and for. I hope you'll join us. We have our radio show Operation Freedom every Sunday from 2 to 5 Eastern. You can stream it live. Just go to DaveJanda.com, hit the listen button. It goes to Wham Talk 1600 streaming service. All you have to do is hit the play button there. We are available on this YouTube channel. We are available at DaveJanda.com, both the free, the public side, but where the real meat of the matter is, is on our subscription side, a very affordable $9 a month, where you get the extra shows, our, G our WTF geopolitical show, our insider insight show, where we bring someone forward from behind the curtain to present information that the bought off lamestream fake media will not touch. Our Department of Advanced Research show, with Nick Ruiz, our contributing editors section, our featured series on healthcare policy that you'll never get anyplace else, our healthcare series with Dr. Peter Glidden, and all the archives associated with our shows. I hope you become a member of our Freedom Family because without our subscribers, this YouTube channel, uh, the website DaveJanda.com, and the radio show Operation Freedom would not exist. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off, dream big and dare to fail. Thank you for your time today and happy Thanksgiving.